there, and welcome to Tim Portalers, the show where we jump around a whole bunch of different games and systems, and hopefully do so in a somewhat coherent manner. I am Seth, I am writer and game master, and with me I have... I am David, and I am wearing a t-shirt from a middle school math class, so it's like 17 years old now. <laughs> I'm Rachel, and I've been rebranding myself today with a 10-year-old computer. And can you do middle school math? It depends on the day. Okay. That's, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. And I'm Kyle, and I'm wearing a Christmas shirt, which will be kind of weird when this episode is actually released, because it's not going to be anywhere next to Christmas. Not that it is now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Ro- yeah. So, when, <laughs> when last we left our heroes, they had had uh, some run-ins with uh, some people in the land of Shadowrun and <laughs> in the, the city. world. <laughs> the city of Lomdon. Yes. Uh, Lomdinium. Oh, my bad. And then had run into those same people again. Uh, basically a younger troll... Uh, by the name of Vethanai was seemingly involved in some kind of uh, angsty young people freedom movement known as the Dirats. The Dirats. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, she seems super proud of that and was bringing you in. And uh, you guys got an apartment below her and her grandparents and uh, set out to get a boat because the plan in the morning was to apparently head out to the emerged island of Lioness. uh, Not in the morning, it was in the afternoon at exactly 2.15 or something like that. It's going to be back in tea time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Hopefully back for tea time. Yeah. Cannot be missed. Uh, And went down to the docks and decided, hey, maybe we don't want a boat because turns out... uh, Sahin's sister, Hizma, who has accompanied the three of you on this excursion into the world beyond the lodge, uh, has found she has some sort of voucher in her pocket that uh, can be redeemed at the Bank of England. Uh, it appears to be for something called the Cloud Staff. She's not sure what it is. You guys aren't sure what it is. No, but no, apparently no, 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 no. somebody has appraised it as being worth 20,000 new yen. And so the following morning after sleeping on the floor of your new apartment, that's kind of a dump, um, went out and acquired new clothing for Kizma to make her appear a little, a little more uh, upper crust. Uh, with what money you have that you have manifested with you, uh, however that works. And uh, as Sahin and Kizma were seen to this, Hideyoshi and Memphis had set out to acquire sustenance, uh, good old traditional baked beans, whatever kind of breakfast. Yep. Uh, and fried tomatoes and bacon. <laughs> nice crispy bacon. Uh, and somebody had been keeping an eye on you. You didn't really get a good look at them, but you then were slipped some kind of note with your breakfast that informed you that the Wakened were awaiting. With my breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) To put it accurately, yeah, you could eat it. (laughs) Yes, you consumed it with or before your breakfast, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, so that is where we find ourselves. It is uh, the next morning, and apparently you're going to the bank. Yep. Yep. Uh, So after we (coughs) finish eating and we get food for the ladies to go, I guess we will meet up with them wherever it is that they are meeting. I mean, I thought we were shopping just across the street from where... Yeah, Yeah, we just went across the street. We weren't very far... Yeah, then we'll wait. We just didn't want to be involved in the shopping. We didn't want to be in like a lady shop when we are you know, two uh, particularly built dudes. Just knock things over, man. Right. I don't want to be, I think the phrase is, uh, 
a bull in a lady shop or something like that? No, it's a, it's a Taros in a Japanese shop. Whoa, I got it really wrong. Yeah, it seems about right, uh, actually. You must have read that book and I didn't. It's a video game. Oh, it's a video... We have video games at the lodge? Whoa. I need to, like... Shh. Oh, shh. Keep that one on the down low. All right, yeah. <laughs> Don't want the little kids to find out they'll bug it. Right. Yeah. yeah, even at the lodge. It's, some things are universal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, you know, staying up late for the wee hours of the night, keep the volume down so that right. the parents don't hear. Right, I guess in this case, the teachers. Anyway. I can't pause and teach. <laughs> it's an online game. I can't pause. Okay. Actually, would we even have online games? Probably, Probably, Probably not. Probably not. Or would you have all of the internets oh. from every reality? We're just the one people that are, like, trolling everyone else, like, spawn camping and all that. <laughs> would that mean that we could choose which version of a game to play? Oh, I really don't like, you know, the the most recent release of WoW, so I'll pick a, a universe that doesn't have it yet. <laughs> okay. We're getting a little off track. We're the best time. <laughs> I am partly to, partly to blame him. Uh, this just, is the weirdest timeline. Let me just hop to, over to the universe where uh, KOTOR 3 exists. Anyway. Uh, Half-Life 3? Yes. Okay. Finally. Uh, <laughs> confirmed. So... I think uh, we're working on Half Life Four, man. <laughs> the food is compiled. Kizma is very carefully eating so as not to disturb her new uh, fancy duds. And you know she looks she looks pretty pretty smart. Uh, she still is very out of sorts in her dwarven body, but uh, yeah. So just to be clear, like fancy people have bodyguards, right? That's gonna be the three of us. For me, am I, am I the fancy person? You're the fancy person. Okay. You're also, the person, you're also the person with the voucher, like, under your name, so... Right. Yeah. Never had to paperwork before. Right. So this will be interesting. Oh, I feel like if you are a good client of the bank here, or, you know, you've got history with them somehow, they'll be happy to help, but I don't know what the status will be. I mean, I guess we just walk in and say, we've got this voucher, what do we do? And someone in a fancy suit will take us to another person in a fancy suit, and eventually one of the fancy suits will give us a key, and we get the thing. Or or we walk in there like we know what we're doing and say, get me this item, or, you know, take care of this. Right. We gotta make sure you find the right person to ask that question, because if you go up to, like, the, the janitor, then they will not know what to do. <laughs> also, I just realized... Guns in a bank? Probably not a good right. idea. I think I read a Why? book about that. Because well, they don't want to get robbed. And they will shoot you. But they have guns too, right? They... Now, yeah, they're going to use them. So if we walk in with guns, then they're just going to shoot us. Probably. I mean... Let's go take a look outside the bank we're going into. Ooh, and... yeah. Scouting. Yeah. Also, uh, Kizma. Yeah. Do you happen to actually have, like, ID... I mean, I think so. She shows you this small, what looks like some kind of ID. Is it passable? You know? legit? Yeah. Okay. Based upon my understanding of this world, both reading up and being in it and all that stuff, um, is it normal for people to walk around, like, say, the area in the vicinity of the Bank of London, London's financial district? Carrying heavy weaponry? In the nicer places around, you probably either want not to have weaponry on you or have it very well concealed. Okay. Um, if someone were, like, obviously a bodyguard, people would be uncomfortable with, like, the sight of a gun under their jacket? or Pro Probably, like, a small sidearm would be fine, but, okay. you know, maybe just don't tote around a small cannon. Right, so, okay. If that is the case, when we leave, I'll probably be leaving my uh, my AK and the shotgun behind, and bringing just my pistol and my sword. Dude. Swords are fancy, right? Sabers. It's a katana. Yeah, there you go. I have a concealable holster. All right. <laughs> Slip your weapon. I'm pretty sure I'm fine because my auctioneer business clothes actually have a conceivable holster, and then my other gun actually has a, what's it called, um, a, uh, 
little kind of holster that's actually up in the sleeve bag. Yeah. So there is. Uh, I also have a concealable holster for my pistol. All right. So you guys are all able to hide your weapon rather well. Oh my. Uh, the, uh, hey, Yoshi, you gotta stop bumping into things. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Oh, the painting. Yes. I thought I balanced it back appropriately, but. I was... <sighs> sorry. In, in our uh, high tech sound studio environment, listener, we've, we've had a painting fall off the wall. A painting in London. So you, you got it hooked on with this, which oh. is why it fell. It needs to be on the. Sorry. The actual frame. So I'll um, leave you to do that. Okay. Either. Next time we'll try to defy gravity. Okay. Eh. I'll allow it. That's alright, I'll be popular. <laughs> For a couple of years and then people will kind of forget. Oh, that's right, I'll just learn to let it go, let it go then. Yeah. Um, For a couple of years and then people will kind of forget. <laughs> and that's then they'll come out with number two. Yeah. Yeah. Can't right. keep me down. <laughs> Is that yeah. a thing I the second one? I, I have to see the second one, I probably have okay. to see the second one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Kizma does not seem to have. Uh, actually, uh, would you have made it a point to acquire her clothing that would have some kind of hidden holsters? If you would allow for that, yes. Sure, you can spend a session point, whatever they're called in this story point. Yeah. Story okay. points for uh, Genesis. Oh, we got it's just edge. It's just edge. Because we're edgy. But there's still some type, some sort of like story. Anyway, uh, but sure, uh, an edge can be spent for that Do you thing. Want, does she want to she spend can... the edge to have pointed it out, or would it have been more so me being the... Uh, the yeah, she, she's entirely green to the whole thing still, okay. so uh, it would likely be Big Sister, who is worldly wise at this point. <clears throat> After all, she's been a new princess, so... Yeah. Oh, so about spending karma. Yes. Uh, can I maybe retroactively say that last night, um, or maybe early this morning before breakfast while I was waiting for other people to do their morning things, that I uh, disassembled my AK and looked at all the parts and put it back together again and picked up a firearms rifle specialization. You may, because player and listeners, uh, players and listener, I should say, uh, it's, uh, yeah, um, Downtime is apparently an integral part of character advancement in Shadowrun, and we may not have a whole lot of downtime in our truncated campaign here. So, yeah, if, if you uh, want to have some sort of uh, player reason or character reason to have advanced utilizing the karma you have acquired, that is doable, as I don't want to just get to the end of our short campaign in Shadowrun and it's like, oh, well, I had 20,000 karma that I never got to use. Okay. Sounds good. Because we should be exploring the different cool things and advancements and abilities and whatnot you guys can unlock, so. And so now to clarify again, we're all going to the bank. Gizmo's gonna do all the talking because she's got the voucher, and we're just gonna look tough. I have to do all the talking? Well, yeah, you got the voucher, so. Actually, now that I think about it, sometimes you're too important to talk. That's what, yeah, sure. Let's use that. I mean, does that mean that I need to talk? Can you talk pretty? What do you mean? I mean, like, like whichever nice one of us is the best and most charismatic should be the one that does all the talking. But I'm worried about this one. What about me? I well, mean, I, I went to a party. I talked just fine over in space. I've been to a party. I, I, know, a party. I know how things work. People come to you and ask how you're doing. And you respond, yes, I'm doing rather well. I'm uh, this, uh, you know, whatever I was eating over there, because to be honest, I didn't know half of the things I ate. I probably should have okay. what I was eating, but, you know, yeah, I but this is not this is not there. I think it should be fine though if, if you're good at talking, but just as long as it's well lit in the bank. Because honestly, in the dim light, like when I had to get up in the night, you're uh-huh. nightmarish in the oh. dim light. Oh, my you, apologies. You look like uh, some kind of evil specter. So. Oh, okay. But in the sunlight, I, I look just fine. Yeah, it's it's like Slend- Slender Man meets Jack Skellington kind of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's this? What's this? <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll be like your uh, hype man. 
Is that what it's called? I don't know. No, I'm sure it's not, but okay. Whatever you say, boss. Be, be the mouthpiece of Kisma. <laughs> <laughs> old gray bean, old bank of evening. <laughs> I have a voucher I'm going to need to show thee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I still oh. think. <laughs> Sorry. We're in fine form tonight. Um, I still think we need to uh, take some time outside the bank to, you know, see what's what. But if we start walking around the bank and they notice that we start walking around the bank... No, not walking around the bank. Walking out front and if there's a decent place to pause for a moment and watch the traffic, then we go. Like one of those Matrix cafes or something? Well, actually, GM. Mm-hmm. I have knowledge London pubs. Is there a pub right across the street or somewhere in the near vicinity of the great old London bank? Uh... Or? <laughs> you know what? Sure. Just go ahead, go ahead and roll for your knowledge okay. of pubs. What, what do I roll? Uh, we'll, we'll call that, uh, uh, intuition plus whatever skill it is. It's just a knowledge just, skill. Just a knowledge skill. Go so with uh, uh, intuition logic, I guess. Oh boy, okay, that's six. Okay, oh, we're starting off so great. Uh, that's three hits. All right, yes, you are able to locate a pub. What's the name of this pub? Uh, since you have knowledge pub, you get to name them all. Oh boy. Well, we already have, uh, we already went through the cricket bat bar. Uh, of course, not floundering. There you go. Yeah, the flounder. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> kind of weird to have that right across from the bank, but okay. <clears throat> the, the, the baffled flounder. Okay. There we go. I approve. <laughs> Thanks for the assist. All right, and just like the, the sign over the door is just this flounder with the eyes just <laughs> and the mouth hanging open aghast. As it's completely baffled, and you walk uh, up to the pub. Yeah, it's across well, from the bank. Why don't we go get something to drink to look natural, and then we'll get a window seat. I like this plan. All right, let's do it. I will have some Earl Grey tea. Okay, tea Earl Grey hot. I think I'll have a Genesis. Isn't it Earl Grey? No, there's an A in there, so it's E-A-R-O. Uh, E-R-O. Also, also heard that E-R-O. Russian water is pretty good, so... Yarl Grand Tea, yes. Yarl Grand Sure, can I get a mug of rock, Russian water? Oh, sure. Does it come in mugs? I don't know. Mm, it's Russian Wasser. 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 But that's Wasser and Wasser. I, I think at this point we have crossed so many streams. <laughs> Let's bring it on back. Anyway, we walk into the... Uh, Yep. A guest or a fun the, the baffled flounder. flounder. The, the baffled flounder. flounder. Or like some light lunch fare and assorted beverages. Okay. It's like late morning at this point, so. A croissant, maybe. Yep. Croissant. Ah, oui, oui. Les croissants. Yes. A croissant? A crusty ant. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, friends. Anyway, so you're, you've all, you've, everything is, uh, Brought to you in short order, you know, there's uh, it's the, the kind of thing, uh, the, the pastries are brought as like the, the candied, jellied kind of fare that uh, GM does not care for. And uh, yeah, the various drinks are provided, uh, we'll say 10 million a piece. So, okay. Cover that. You said 10? Yep. Okay. Because it's a number that I think sounds good. Well, if I run out of uh, New Year, I know who to talk to. I mean, that just sounds like you don't. Uh, you're not good with your finances, so you see somebody about that. In game. Uh oh. 
So uh, we we observe the traffic in and out of the bank for a little bit. Yep. Um, what what's what's the clientele like? What's their equipment like? There's a lot of coattails involved. Uh, the the kind of clientele that they get. Um, the you know species race doesn't appear to be too much of a factor. It's just various people who have you know if they got if they got horns they're adorned. If they got pointy ears they got. The earrings. Yeah. Uh, kinda, they're generally well-to-do patrons of this establishment. And that's the only people who actually enter the premises. Uh, you do note that there appear to be um, entourages for, for various uh, entrants, but none of them are overtly uh, muscle some of them might be, but none of them are advertising the fact, at least. So we would stand out if we went in there, looking like we do currently. Potentially. Does that mean we also need to go shopping? I don't know if I can afford a coat this big. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a I large have... and tall store somewhere nearby. Also, Seth, out of curiosity, how fancy is my auctioneer business? Clothes. Yeah, they're, they're business clothes. They're they're reasonably. Right. Would I look out of place if I were to go there? Or depends on how you carry yourself. Okay. Like like you belong there. Yeah. I oh. have clothes with a electrochromatic feature, so I can make them look like what I want. Fancy. Yeah. I have an armored jacket. I'll stay behind. Okay. I'll uh, wait out here and cover you in case something goes wrong. And you can leave all your big toys with me. Okay. I also get a little closer to Hideyoshi and just say, also keep an eye out for, uh, you know, who. Yep. Do I? <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll tell you later. Okay. But keep your eyes peeled. Okay. Watch Actually, everyone. what I do is so that way I don't scare the noobs. Uh, the new, uh, I'm going to go ahead and with the smart link thing, since we both have the smart link, go ahead and share the screenshot that I took of the elf dude to your heads up display, basically. Okay. And then just uh, have a little text in to say, keep eye out for this person. Okay. Now, now you know! Alright, so to prevent the exchange of uh, weaponry <laughs> in front of the civilians, we will set up a bathroom exchange program. <laughs> okay. Uh, just for fun, you get a roll for that. Uh, I like to imagine just because I'm totally incompetent with computers that it takes me a while to actually send a link image of it. <laughs> Stay, 20 minutes later. Right, yeah. Or like I send it your time. eyes just like crossed. <laughs> How do you make an attached file? Right. I don't, uh... So if I bring the image the start up, start menu? And then, and then I take a screenshot of myself with the image up. And then I email that to myself. Right, yeah. And I embed the email in a document. Ugh. And then I have to oh. host it on a website. So that way I can pick it up from anywhere. I'll create a bit.ly link. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, this is making me think of And then I think there's something called like a firewall I need to put it behind. So we'll put it in Bitcoin. And then we'll be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Embed the link in a Bitcoin block. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody roll like a skullduggery stuff. Um, there's oh. a, a stealth. Oh, right, there's no uh, skullduggery. So, yeah, just uh, stealth, I suppose. Stealth. Okay. And since all what I have is just light armor or light weapons, or I guess I have a heavy pistol, but they're all pistols and whatnot, I should be finally like, through things for looking over the world. Mm. Alright, so. Would they be uh, offended if I carry in a knife as well? You don't know, you haven't seen anybody carrying in knives. Okay. Um,. Presumably, since this is a teamwork effort, yes. I will have some people helping me. Certainly. Is. Well, um, by the by, I have a stealth of six and an agility of seven, so you might want to help me. Here you go. Well, I would not follow that then. Uh, so with teamwork things, we just roll our stealth, in this case stealth, and then we give uh, however many hits we add. Yeah. Well, stealth, stealth is connected to agility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My agility is good. My my stealth is less good. What is my agility? My agility is five. And what's your stealth? Two. Oh. That's the same that I've got. <laughs> oh, it's not no. a critical glitch, but it's a glitch. That's a glitch. But here's two dice that you get to have. 
Alright, as you guys are doing this weird intricate dance, like in between the different uh, bathrooms, oh, hold on. I, I uh, still got a there's still a glitch. So go ahead. This is the future. There are unisex bathrooms. <laughs> yes, but you're not all in the same one, are you? No. We're probably just like, I, you know, hit, he goes in first, and then we, the rest of us just kind of okay. wait in a line outside and then exchange. I do approve that the two dice that I gave to Rachel both came up once. <laughs> and, and the dice you gave me was a four. So. <laughs> wasn't useful, but it wasn't useless. It wasn't a glitch like somebody. So, five Fine. hits. Okay. Uh, you guys are super stealthy about this, and like, really the only way that somebody would uh, happen upon your clandestine doings is if they just, you know, randomly needed to make use of the facilities at the at a, at a inconvenient time, which is what happens. And uh, there's, there's a point but where you guys we're are able to... like very, very coolly handing off swapping weaponry and uh, this, uh, one of you exiting, nodding back, and you just turn around, there's this older dwarf gentleman <laughs> standing there. Good afternoon, sir. Walk out. So, are you done in here? Uh, yes, go right ahead. Thank you. He walks slowly in, and you can hear him just kind of looking around. He's pretty sure he just interrupted some kind of drug drop or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, we were too clandestine. For security's sake, uh, after they leave, I'm going to go and find a different pub. Okay. What's the name of this one? Ooh. Yes. This one? Uh, the bad drop-off. I don't know. <laughs> it was the drop off. There we go. We're, we're going to the drop off. <laughs> I don't know. Are David, you do you want to name it anything different? I mean, I'm finding this one. <laughs> right. uh, you head into the drop off. The, yep. the owner of the establishment, the, the head proprietor, is a, uh, a nice older gentleman by the name of Cliff. Uh, <laughs> of course it would be. <laughs> you make sure to give him some notes just so that way you can, you know, be entertained while you're waiting around. Okay. Now, uh, Kizma, do you actually go by, is your ID for Kizma, or should I call you something else? I mean, it, it says so. Okay. As you're looking over the ID, it's, it's, it's like basic, you know, Pepas. Uh, it's, it's basically just, uh, you know, name and personal info. There's actually okay. not any sort of photo identification. <laughs> does it say what her profession is, or what does she do? Conspicuously, no. Okay. Well, um, what about what are what are they usually supposed to look like? I don't have what are uh, It's probably supposed to have like full three D profile. I guess I'll pull know. out mine. And yeah, it's it's, my... it's got the full you know profile front everything, you know, eye color everything down to you know what are the, what are your dental records kind of thing. If that's okay. a good ID. Okay, which I do have a ra- uh, rating of five for my uh, face, and so and I think the highest is six, so it's probably pretty intricate. Mm-hmm. Now we know everything about Slender Man. But anyway, um... Okay. Uh, you removed the mystery. He's not scary anymore. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, make my way in front of Kizma, and then just go ahead and start walking off to the bank. Okay. I'm going to claim a seat and purchase one of these coffees that I've heard about. Mm-hmm. And, a coffee uh, fee? Yes. <laughs> And the, and the key coffee. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce this word, but Kofifi sounds like a good idea. Um, and I will pull out my phone data pad thing and just poke at it with my zero ranks in electronics for a little while while I'm mm-hmm. mostly just keeping an eye across the street. You're doing the, the cyberpunk equivalent of reading the newspaper. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, that's still called reading the newspaper. Except it's on a little screen instead of like this yeah. tree corpse or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, this, this world's pretty hardcore. So metal. All right. All right. So wooden. <laughs> Here's a mine of metal. <laughs> so you guys uh, start heading across the street and uh, are heading towards the jolly old Bank of England. And uh, it's a bit different from how it looks in our reality. Uh, you know, all sorts of uh, new updates to the, the, the front and the face. Yes, but... So if they are, well, like, I'm going to be uh, very uh, conspicuously looking ahead to be seen 
if uh, IDs are checked when you walk in the door, and if they no, are, I'm... The okay. Because otherwise, I'm screwed. Okay. I want to go ahead and make sure I open the door for Kizma. Yeah, she just kind of stands there waiting. Are you going in? Go. After you. Why? I kind of, I kind of go get in there. This is okay. Just, she. I, 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 I yeah. hold, hold her back and say, "This is what you know. Important people. This is what important people need to do to get places, and this is what they do. So you need to act like right you're important." She. Winks very, very <laughs> blandly. Oh, Otherwise, she's good at keeping secrets. Yeah. Oh, okay. And just kind of grandly pushes you back away with you <laughs> and strides grandly into the bank. Uh, May the force be with you. Uh-huh. I wait until both of them enter, then I'll close the door, then take up my uh, position right and kind of slightly in front of, but adjacent to Gizma, and then walk my way up, I guess, to a uh, bank teller? It's uh, the, the bank teller that you are received by. Uh, this is like a middle-aged, uh, orcish gentleman. <laughs> ah, welcome! Welcome to your bank! Yes, thank you. Uh, my client here would like to uh, claim uh, a relic that you have for her. She has a voucher. No, oh, we have many relics and many matching vouchers. Oh, I'm certain. Uh, Kizma, if you would so kindly. Yes, of course, and just kind of pushes you out of the way. I make sure to kind of take a bow and step back. She grandly pulls out the voucher, places it purposefully on the counter and slides it across. (laughs) Uh, And the the teller receives it, looks carefully across it, scans it through the system. If you would all accompany me to uh, a back room where we can address this more... Thoroughly. Certainly. Judge intentions. Okay. <laughs> Insight check. Sense motive. Judge intentions is not connected to anything but itself, I think. Villages. What? Yes. Yeah, it is already a pre-combined check of two other attributes. That's what, what I remember. Oh. I think oh, it's willpower and intuition or something like have? that. Eight. I have eight as well. Oh. We're like twins. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> Come on. Man. You're Ready? both elves, basically the same. Right, yeah. Racist. Uh, two hits. Two hits. Uh, he's... He, he appears to be a an individual who is very accustomed to, you know, keeping the, the pleasant smile ready for the customers. Uh, but you note that there's... Something that something has registered for him that hmm, this is a a unique client. Maybe because they have Slenderman, <laughs> Hype Man. Okay. Yes, of course, I am entitled to special treatment. Says Keith and he begins to follow, follow him. I'll follow and him I I would um, if if I could very subtly send like because I think. Kizma would probably have um, the image link, I would yeah. assume. Yeah. Uh, so I would um, send them some text regarding, you know, you know, keep 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 an eye out for something. You know, he he, he seems to either think you are a unique client or something's up. Kind of kind of uh, message. Okay. Also, um, with my uh, little computer, whatever you call it, thing, my Bob, I actually have a sub vocal microphone. And so, sub vocally, I'm going to go call up uh, Hideyoshi. Just <laughs> throw a Right, yeah. <laughs> just like, uh, but just tell him that we are entering and we're going to a back room or something like that, just so he's kept in the loop. I like double tap the, the talk button click click <laughs> um, and incidentally I got three hits on my perception test just to keep an eye out for things okay clients continue to come and go and you're looking through it's a little cold outside and you're, it's, it's like a, you know the, the sad Christmas child looking in the toy store <laughs> and like every, everything it looks warm and fancy inside and people are laughing ha 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 I also got one hit on my electronics test hey the Americans have a news page named after my people 
this really reliable site. Hmm. Carry on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you, you folks on the inside are uh, following the, the bank teller. He's leading you to a, a back room. I'm just following him. Okay. Right. You trail him inside. He takes a place behind the desk and is bringing up various uh, pages and whatnot, uh, info behind his screen. They're chair on the opposite side of the desk? Yes. I make sure to pull it out and have uh, wait until Kizma sits down and I'll push her forward with it. As she hesitates briefly again. Right. <laughs> gives, you, gives you another wink right. and grandly sits down. I give her a glare every time she gives me a wink. Like, kind of drapes one leg over it. <laughs> 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 I, I, I do the me- look the mental equivalent of face palm. Yeah. The bank teller briefly looks up from his work <laughs> and just looks back down. But I'm just going to stand uh, beside Keith. All right. Well then, he says after he's uh, spent some time with his computer, it seems as though this is an auspicious occasion, yes? I'm sorry. Auspicious occasion? Kyle has no idea what that word means. <laughs> Notable, noteworthy. Oh, portentous. Yes, it sure. is. You see that big word? I was trying to keep it simple. <laughs> After all, we just have to start about twelve-year-old kid inside. So, <laughs> anyway, but yes, it is. So, uh, you will of course be able to retrieve the item. This is uh, a bit of an unusual occurrence with, with the. Uh, uh, first key of the identification being set up to, one might say, incomplete uh, data. Uh, the further keys will be required of uh, uh, DNA confirmation and, of course, a uh, vocal test. I'm sure that my client will be willing to do that. I will? I kind of look down there and then just smile and look back across at the you said it was a orc, or yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Do you need that stuff now, or well, before we are able to release the item to you? Yes, of course. Can we see the item? You may not. <laughs> it is part of the parameters of when we were entrusted with it. I am afraid. Well, you said that there was a vocal aspect as well as a DNA aspect. So, for the vocal aspect, where would you like the vocal recording? Simply speaking to this microphone. Brings it around to Kizma. Yes. My voice that is certainly linked to this account. Turns to the both of you, like, what, what is, what do I do? Uh, lightly shrug. Um... Since she also has the image link thing, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to take me a little bit because I'm uncomfortable with computers. But <laughs> well, uh, this is long, awkward silence. Right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and just. Uh, I'll send her a message. Oh, just, okay. Just, what are you going to say? I was just going to say, just, just go along with it. So I was going to. In my message, that comes a little bit after that. Um, basically, relay something to the effect of. Um, how like we experienced before when we came over, I, once again, this is a weird way to say it, but our bodies know things that we don't personally know because we're not accustomed to this world. So maybe her body or something like that has like, she has a memory of actually having something set up already for this item in question. I don't know if she does or not, but. I don't. Okay, well then, I, then I'll just say, uh, in the little image like thing, just say your name then. Just leans forward. It's Talarin? I believe so. Oh, yes, Talarin. Yes. Kizma Talarin. Very good. And uh, the uh, DNA, if you will. Just puts out the. <laughs> <laughs> just put, puts out a, some sort of device that appears to just be for the prick. Uh, I just had a terrifying thought about this. Don't give the game master ideas, okay? Uh, no, no, okay, I'm gonna keep that to myself. I'll text you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Kizma just hesitantly reaches forward. Do I just stab myself with this? Is that the thing? Is that do I do that? No, this is all in the image, whatever. Yeah. Thing. All right, yeah, I I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, stab yourself. Just uh, and then I'll your, go ahead. Just your finger. Um, since I have a med kick and all that, I'll go ahead and quickly procure a band and just you know uh, wait for her just to, to just tick. and a sweet, if you please. I'll go ahead. And I don't know if I have a sweet, but did you save anything from your time here? I have it specifically marked down, but can I use an edge and just sure. have like one of those uh, old grandma candy things? That Do the hard candy, <laughs> hard candy, hard candy. And then I go ahead and uh, you know present it, unwrap it, and then like hold it out. She <laughs> just, <laughs> just opens her mouth. To <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, the bank teller has been uh, tapping away at his uh, keyboard and just merrily uh, <laughs> face unchanged, just pushes away uh, in his chair, stands. If you would all please wait here for a moment. Certainly. Exits the room. <clears throat> I go ahead and my head's up display. Just go ahead and have a little count. Uh, stopwatch just doop. And then so that way I can tell how long he's been gone. Okay. And also, sub vocally, I go tell, uh, like, <clears throat> give Hideyoshi an update of what's going on. Okay. And then I wait. Okay. Unless Sahina or Kizma has something. I don't want to talk in here. Yeah, Kiz- Kizma's just sitting there looking between the two of you and sucking on her hard candy. <laughs> Nervously. Uh, Hideyoshi, mm-hmm. from outside you're beginning to see slightly more activity <clears throat> within uh, the interior. It looks as though uh, the bank teller you had seen with your companions from earlier is uh, returning to the back room where he has taken them mm-hmm. with a, a couple of uniformed individuals. Heads up, the fuzz is on its way. For the bank? Maybe. Okay. Looks like he has got guards incoming. <clears throat> uh, is this normal? And this is all through the whatever comment, whatever things. Just so, or is she talking out loud? She's she's saying that part out loud. Well, um, ma'am, I believe that it is perfectly normal for things to take a little bit to retrieve your item. It makes you feel even more important. Could I tell at that distance if these uniformed individuals were carrying anything? They don't appear to be. Okay. Then <laughs> you mentioned that to us. Or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All okay. like you know, I don't think they're bringing you your package. But um, over the microphone, then I would say, um, or however we do it, text, whatever thing. Uh, basically, just say, uh, well, we probably don't want them to try to shoot our way out of the bank. That would really create a lot more mm-hmm. things. So it might be best for us that I hate to say this, like, let them come to us and see what happens. All right, I'm going to move in a little bit closer, though. Is there a a bench outside that's a little bit closer to the bank? Sure, there'd be benches outside. Okay. I will get up and make sure I pay my tab at the current place and go and just casually sit down and try to prevent clatter as much as possible and then keep on looking at the internet on my, my phone mm-hmm. while also just, like, every once in a while I look up, look around, and keep an eye on things. All right. Uh, the door to the back chamber you've been led to opens, and the bank teller uh, indicates all three of you. These are the individuals. Uh, these gentlemen here will be escorting you to uh, another location. Can I do another judge intention? Sure. While she's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and pull back out the chair so he's looking it out. Okay. <clears throat> You pull out the chair and, like, startles her at first. She's like, ah! oh, oh, right. My apologies, yes. man. No, no, yes. Of course. Three. Actually, do, do, do I want to spend an edge to... Can I spend an edge to re-roll? You can, if you want to. Uh, I believe it's one... Yeah, one edge one re-rolls, one die. Yeah. Okay. But is this a situation where I'd want to know more? <clears throat> 
up to you. I don't know how many three hits is going to get us. Three hits. Okay. Uh, the gentlemen appear to be... Well, I want to judge intentions on him. The bank teller? The bank teller telling us about, like, and, and end the situation. But specifically that these people are supposed to take us to another location? Yes. Uh, the bank teller, for his part, is, is still pretty hard to read, but is uh, apparently, you know, he doesn't appear nervous or anything. Uh, okay. And the uniformed individuals, as far as you're able to read of them, that they just start moving into flank. Uh, you're not getting any immediate hostile intention, but they are adamant about... Taking that somewhere. Yes. I, I would uh, send 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 a, a, a stealth text message to uh, to everyone of uh, seems very intentional. Okay, I go ahead and pick up uh, stuff alongside Kizma, and I'm guessing someone's leading us somewhere because we don't know where mm-hmm. they're going. The, so. the guards at this point are flanking you and leading you over to the lift because you're. In- you're in England, uh, so you're, you're taking over to one of the lifts. Right. Well, I'm done. Yes. <laughs> now it's time for our Captain America elevator scene. <laughs> uh, the bank teller bids a farewell to you all, of course. And Thank I you. do hope you find what you are looking for. I hope so, too. And then I'll go ahead and let them lead us on. Okay. Uh, you head into the lift. <laughs> Once it closes, close. I will lean over to one and say, hey, Elijah. <laughs> no. You walk. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta help myself. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's rising the lift. Doom. Oh, so we're going up. Doom. Yeah. Doom. 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 How many Doom. floors are at this thing? You don't. Know. Oh. From outside, how many floors did it look like? I mean, at least seven or eight. Okay. So how many did we go well, up? Is that counting the ground floor? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It always throws me off. No. <laughs> so you, uh, the elevator doors, sorry, the lift doors open, and uh, this is a very. Uh, it's it's kind of a situation of where it seems to open up into one continuous space, like uh, some kind of uh, penthouse suite, ah. mm-hmm. and seems to take up. The majority, at least, of this floor, and you're brought out into it, and uh, there's a, a speck on the far end of this enormous chamber who appears to be pouring some drinks in like this kitchenette area. Everything is, you know, stone, hardwood, marble, lacquered, uh, fancy decor, postmodern lighting, and uh, just raises a bottle over in your direction. Oh, if you would all please join me. Certainly, and I go ahead and uh, follow Kizma, or if she's not follow, if she's not leading the way, then I'll go ahead and lead the way, kind of partially right in front of her, but make sure I stay close to her. Mm-hmm. And she's she still work. striding haughtily, turns back to the, the guards. And I make sure to take up the rear and follow her closely. Yeah. She turns back to the guards. You are dismissed. <laughs> they look to each other, and they look past the, the gentleman far in the far end of the chamber who just... Gives a nod, and they <laughs> turn about and head back in the lift. Okay. Does it look like he wants us to sit down, or is it a he? Or a she? It to be. Okay. Uh, so I'll make my way up over there, and then if it looks like he wants us to sit down, I'll go ahead and once again pull out a chair for Kizma, and then, you know, go All right. I stand behind the chair away, uh, like, you know, a couple feet. Very. Kind of uh, surveying what's going on. As you draw closer, uh, you see he's a very... Uh, small for his species, very uh, slender, dapper-looking ogre, uh, dressed in you know very uh, well-to-do garb, you know cufflinks, fancy lapel, etc. Bank teller was mm-hmm. also an ogre. He was a troll. He was a troll. Okay. He was an orc. I thought orc. Or oh, sorry, orc. This guy's an ogre. Teller? Ogre. Bank teller was an orc. This guy's an ogre. Okay. <laughs> I know all the different all the different species. The uh, types. Yes, uh, but as you draw near, it appears as though three different glasses have been poured for each of you of some sort of dark amber liquid, and uh, he has got a fourth glass, 
and dropping into a, a seat around this uh, very... So, or like a fourth class to making five total, one for him? Four total, one for him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That would because that would have been a really uh, terrifying note. <laughs> I'm just waiting for your friend across the street. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, suddenly, he's the count. Okay. Uh, Sorry. But, oh no. Yeah, like this is this is the kind of you know suite where the the windows can be dimmed, etc. Yeah. Like the, there aren't even shades. It just kind of uh, blocks out as much light as it want, he wants. But like they're. The, the walls full of windows kind of look that look out over the long done and uh, it is the corner office yes uh, it's it appears to be every corner uh, oh my and uh, he yeah sinks down into one of the, the chairs about this smartly crafted table and just leans back switches his drink and motions for you all to take a seat I go ahead and once again uh, if I haven't already do the whole chair thing with Kizma, then take a seat right next to her. She seems to stifle his eyes. Like, oh, I can't wait for him to pull out my chair again. Anyway, uh, but she <laughs> accepts and slowly reaches out for one of the drinks. It just takes a very... You shake your head and she <clears throat> just kind of raises it to her mouth and then looks out the window <laughs> coolly. Uh, Has the guy already taken a sip? He, yeah, he's, he's right, slowly I'll go ahead and, nursing his drink. I'll go ahead and take a sip. Right. Of whatever amber is put. <clears throat> well. I, I stand, stand behind my chair and look at him, I stare at him for a bit, see if he says anything about me not sitting. You prefer to stand, I see. I just nod. And you are honored guests of this bank. And we thank you for your hospitality. But? There was no but. I was just thanking you for the hospitality. Why do you all seem so ill at ease? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if we're making it seem like we're ill at ease. The dwarf is clearly unaccustomed to having one wait upon her desires. The elf, the other elf, is, um... (laughs) Well, she's not looking at me very kindly, to put it bluntly. And you, sir... (laughs) I'm not entirely sure what to make of you. (laughs) Well, I apologize then for my appearance, but we're mainly here just to collect the item on the voucher. You can believe that I'm the muscle. I'm not certain I do. So, if you don't mind my asking a few preliminary questions regarding the retrieval of the item of firstly introductions. My name is Walsley. I am the curator of the bank proper, as well as our more unique items. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is uh, Memphis MacDonald. On purpose. Hmm? Good, good thing you didn't tell him your middle name. I'm, I'm sorry, David? What? It's a good thing you didn't tell him your middle name. Why? Because he's making fun of your name. Yeah. I, I, sorry, Kyle did not get it. <laughs> what did he say anyway? He just, on purpose? I am afraid I don't understand what you mean. I think I'm learning what to make of you as we go along. I give a polite little smile. Anyway. Kizma just says grandly, Kizma Tsalaren. <laughs> we, would, we would like the item and we will be on our way. Yes, I suppose that is the intention of this meeting, but a few questions first. I don't take my job as curator lightly. And as you can see, I'm well compensated. Certainly. You got quite the office. If one can be so modest to call it an office. Well, you should see my home. I'll take your word for it. A little 
Mm, distraction I tolerate for business hours. Well then. Minfus, Kizma, and the Muscle. <laughs> nice. I'm very much not giving my name because I'm not giving, especially not giving my last name because that would be strange, I think, for me to be related to a dwarf in this. Less strange than other settings because mm. the, the way that the meta types work is they're technically human but with random weird mutations. And so you can have two humans give birth to an elf and a dwarf separately. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that was how it worked. Yeah, it's... But then I was also thinking if I had to give a name, Tracy. Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well then, uh, I don't know if you're aware of all the history of this particular item, but in fact the, uh, the curation of this cloud staff actually predates my proud family history's tenure being curators of the Bank of England. I will say that we're not aware of its history, so that's rather enlightening. So then, if you are as ignorant as you appear to be about the history of this item, might one inquire how you came to be in possession of a voucher? Well, I may be ignorant of the item's history, but I was not the one carrying the voucher. And I look over at Keith. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she like kind of gives you the the side eye, like I am going to kill you. And then I go ahead and very long, and I'm giving him the look of, or, and then both the look of, I'll help. <laughs> uh, but it takes me a little bit to do it. But I go ahead and say, you got the internet, use it. And then you know, the have her. I don't she know. just. Slowly, kind of looks to her <laughs> drink and <clears throat> like in, takes a deep breath a few times, clears her throat, looks out the window, and <laughs> oh, so nods, obvious. nods sagely. Make the story. And eventually, like after this long, uncomfortable pause during which Wolseley's just continued to nursing his drink, uh, she's she's just communicating back to you guys. There is nothing on the internet about this. I would send her a text back of, uh, well, what is your body now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? We have found that sometimes our physical body knows things about the world that we do not. If you have the voucher, you might know something. Okay. Uh, I guess she's going to roll for that. <laughs> While we're waiting for that, how do you spell this dude's name? Wolseley. It's uh, W-O-L-S-E-L-E-Y. W-O-L-S-E-L-E-Y. Okay. All right. Okay. Putting it in my notes, even though I don't know the guy. Did you, at some point, did someone at some point, like, send me a text message, we're on the top floor? Uh... <clears throat> I don't think I said it, but I would imagine I would have. Probably somebody, one okay. of us would have. I mean, right. he has to wait so long to get into the elevator. And do, I mean, who knows what floor we're on, but... Right, I was, I was hoping that someone was keeping me updated with periodic, like, here's where we are. Right. In case I suddenly need to run into a bank, pull out all of the guns, and shoot my way to the top floor... <laughs> I hope it doesn't come to that. That'll go well. In jolly old Londonium. Alright. London. Who oh, we'll call this with my granted I guess not. conjuring intuition to try to dredge up <laughs> no. memories she doesn't have. Oh, Out of curiosity. Could we theoretically make this a Teamwork exercise by all of us trying to consult things ourselves. I mean, or like what we've read about this world. It would be separate checks because this isn't something you can aid each other in okay, accomplishing. No well, stuff, well yes. we could send her the like the text like it through the image link. So technically, we could help spark some memories. <laughs> Question mark. I'm gonna say no. Okay, okay no fine. GM is no fun. <laughs> 
Uh, so I guess just intuition. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she, a couple of times, seems to forget, oh yeah, don't drink the drink, and like slowly raises it as she's trying to dredge something up, and then is like, oh right, and just <clears throat> lowers it back down, <laughs> and twirls it about, and eventually just, I've got nothing, I'm just gonna wing it. Yellow. Okay. Now, uh, what was the last thing that uh, Mr. Wolvesley? Wolfsley. Yes, Wolvesley. Wolvesley. That's how I wrote it down no. originally, so that's how I wrote it. Wolvesley. Wolf. Wolvesley. Wolvesley. Uh, what was the last question he said? Uh, he, was, he was... How did we acquire, said? Asking about the voucher. Why do you have it? Uh, and she just blurts out, Inherited it! <clears throat> I, in- I inherited it. <laughs> All oh, that pause. <laughs> Three words. He just words. slowly pulls out a pocket watch, puts it back. <laughs> well, this might kill the rest of my work day. <clears throat> Why? <laughs> a few more questions, I'm afraid. And each oh. one takes that long. Well. <clears throat> just not so used to uh, this kind of treatment. What are you accustomed to, Miss Muscle? <laughs> not this, and I gesture to the, the drinks and the table and the space. Something I imagine must have been an estranged relative, looks to Kizma, who was a bit more well-to-do than yourself, who passed along this voucher. Yes. Hmm? Please tell me they were a prince from Nigeria. <laughs> yes. Well, in, in knowing our pronunciation, it's more like Nigeria. <laughs> Something like that. I am not going to try and alternate pronounce that one. Nigeria, yeah. yay. <laughs> there we go. You yeah. did it right. Anyway. And you, you, you can, because you live there. Well, that's, that's like the, the Californian, California, yay. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Oh, no. Uh, just. I think I will save us all some time here. Just sets down his drink. I do not think you have come by this voucher. Through conventional means. Alright, I'll level with you. We don't know how we got it, but we have it. (laughs) I see. And it has her name on it. Yes, it has for roughly 800 years. Wait, come again? I might have known. Well, this particular voucher we believed to be in our possession. And it was on last inspection. Okay. So, either somebody retrieved it clandestinely and lawfully, or yourselves or someone associated with you has procured it illegally from our supply. And which do you think it is? Well, this has always been an interesting topic of conversation in my family. You see, as we've studied this item through the years, it was clear from the start that it exceeded our current technological advancements. The voucher? Yes. Its electronic interface. At the time of our receiving of it... Oh... There was no computer with which it might interface. 
There were no computers. That is rather odd. We've been surrounded by many strange things as of our recent adventures. I see. And so I begin to wonder if perhaps you do not present the Bank of England with a hurdle with which it has not been faced before. A time paradox. Whoa. (laughs) I preferred it when you were silent. Oh, I can be quiet for you then. Yep. (laughs) And what are you going to do about it? Mostly, I... Well, I'm quite fascinated. The technology embedded in this voucher, we were about to update our systems and it would have quickly become obsolete. The voucher? Yes. Meaning it would no longer work or you were going to do away with it? Well, I would have kept it. It is my duty to do so. However, it was abruptly not in my possession. Then, it simply walked through the door. Yeah. Honestly, most recently, we were in Japan. So... We have no idea how it got to our possession, and all we know is we found it. Once we got to London. Londinium. I would say. Let me see... (laughs) I would say Londinium, so you know. And while you were in Japan, did you encounter any sort of strange temporal phenomenon that might explain your interaction with this voucher? I look over to the boss because I'm supposed to be silent. (laughs) I'm the only other person can, that can answer that question, technically. <laughs> yep. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We've had experiences with strange uh, time and temporal things. And maybe that explains this but we did not know it in our possession until we arrived here, which was, and out of of the conversation, which was yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Midday yesterday, or was it morning yesterday? It was about midday yesterday. Uh, We got portal dropped into. All right. Don't mention when and where it happened, or he will report us to the police for murder people. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I mean, we are in London, so it makes us pretty pigeons. Pigeons everywhere. (laughs) He just looks between the three of you for a moment. Well, obviously, that is not the entire story. Well, would you uh, think me wise if I shared all of our secrets? I think very little of you one way or the other, Master. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) And then I point out, you can call me Tracy. Must I? Mm. Nah. Good. (laughs) Well... (laughs) Indulge me in a hypothesis. I feel we have no choice, but... Correct. He pulls out the voucher. Mm -hmm. Places it on the table. Periodically, I have gone to our family collection to look at our more notable items. We have 
kept this voucher in remarkably good condition, considering its age. However, it is newer today than when I have ever seen it before. Hey. I just... I'm lost for words. Then my hypothesis is this. Unwittingly, it seems, given your various reactions, but I believe you are tied up in some sort of time loop with this item. Okay. What are we going to do about it? I am going to do my job. Which is, are we going to be uh, sent to prison? Um, Are we going to be punished? Just smiles and lets you, you know, throw out some some unpleasant options and just finishes his drink, slowly stands from the table. I'm going to retrieve your item. Why? Yeah. You have brought the voucher. You have brought the individual on the voucher. Looks to Kizma. And she has rightfully claimed it. Okay. That was unexpected. It is. Especially considering that we were instructed only to rely on two out of the three keys. Which allows this to take place. Looks to Kizma. I don't think you ever set up this account, anticipated that you would be arriving as a dwarf. He just walks me in the room, over to the lift. <clears throat> and then you get a whole string of like, WTF, what's oh, WTF? <laughs> ah! I was probably just on whatever future Lomdon's equivalent of Craigslist is looking at boats. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden just like pop-up messages everywhere like, We're all gonna die, Keys miss the key! Ah! She's 800 years old! I knew it, I shouldn't have been a dwarf. Since I'm not allowed to talk, you know, I'm gonna still be polite and be quiet while the guy's out of the room. But I'm gonna go ahead and just look at my thing and just pull it out and see if there's any records of like a Keys mob. Well, I figured. Talarin. Talarin's uh, in the history, or like, you know, look up Wikipedia. It's like, hey, is there a Talarin family or something like that or whatever? It's just a real person. Right. Uh, you start looking in there, any sort of database you're finding, there are various uh, Kizmas. There's a Talavarian, kind of okay. like, like similar sorts of names scattered throughout, and, and you know, different similar surnames, first names. Nothing. Does, you know, nothing's coming up with a 100% match. Huh. I was just curious. Also, I'm killing some time. <clears throat> My character's logic is only two! And I'm not even there! Keep it together, man. So, Kizma just looks around and... Should we make ourselves at home? Uh, just... We'll just wait. Do I? I want to stress eat, though, and it looked like the fridge was full. I go ahead and <laughs> use another edge hey, point and pull out some more candy and, like, unwrap it. <laughs> like, I don't want your hard candy. <laughs> Slaps it away. Um, Actual but, food. Uh, could I... Well, actually, we got them food. Do you have the food, or do I have the food? I assumed that we ate the food as right, we so were... She, she had eaten some earlier. All right, so now she just wants to stress eat. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would know... The names of Kizmas are uh, Sahin's dad and mom, but mm-hmm. could I maybe look up their names in the great whatever into web tricks? I'm uh, at. That would be up to Sahin, I think. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we'll revisit that when that is determined. Uh, <clears throat> so, your Kizmas just slowly supposed to just. Pretend like I, everything is owed to me, right? So she just walks over to the fridge. Well, actually, I would recommend <laughs> probably not. Uh, this is his office, after all. So if somebody's richer than me, I can't act like I'm rich? That is correct. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> you can't barge into uh, the Queen of England or whoever. Uh, is there a Queen of England in this time? I think so. Uh, well, you can't barge necessarily, like, say, into Buckingham Palace demanding to pet the Queen's corgis. Oh, I, now I want to do that. But I would recommend you don't. Can we, can we find other corgis, though? Oh, well, I'm certain there's other corgis lying okay. up, you know, all about long done. So. <laughs> you think Wolseley has corgis? I don't, he doesn't seem like a corgi guy. Uh, actually, I can, I can see him having corgis. Really? Yes. I was thinking more like, um, like, um, like, like massives, mastiffs or something. You well, know? that too. But it sounds like, you know, as you said, his home is actually more extravagant than this place, so. And this place is pretty rad okay the first time I've ever been in like an office on whatever floor we're on so this is unusual she doesn't have any sort of context for this I sort believe of this is like called like, like a punt house or something like that it's pretty rad punt house punt house I think because it is it's the kind of house where you, you have to punt things around because it's so right. big anyway right. so uh, before too long the lift, once again, slides open. Uh, Wellesley steps out, and he appears to be holding something long, thin, and wrapped in some kind of cloth held in his arms. He brings it forth, lays it on the table, looks to Kizma, who's still kind of in the, the kitchen area. Were you needing a snack? <laughs> No, because you're richer than me. <laughs> well, this has been an interesting day. <laughs> I can't say anything because I told him I'll be quiet. So I just kind of politely just smile. But he just steps back and indicates the, the parcel. Is Kizma back or? Yeah, she's coming back. I wait for Kizma to take a look at it. She takes the cue and steps forward and begins to undo the like the old leather cords and give me to is it, unwrap it can we tell if it's obviously the voucher is however many years old does it look like this thing has been touched since then or obviously it's, I mean how do you want to gauge that I, does it look like it's this is leather does it look like it's 800 years old <laughs> right uh, it looks like it's probably been kept in very uh, you know environment controlled okay. Sort of sure. setting for as long as that's existed. Okay. Cool. But cool. there is definitely some age to it. Okay. But as Kizma steps forward and unwraps it, it does appear to be, you know, about, about the length of a quarter staff uh, and looks to be a rather nondescript length of wood uh, aside from like these thin veins that appear to be like etched into it like bolts of lightning. I look over to Kizma and the boss, the muscle. <laughs> so what do we do with this? How does this get us a boat? I look at her like... What? Is this... Okay. We're gonna go now. Can we use this to make one? Is that how this works? Oh my god. Wait. Do we even want this? What what is what good is this? <laughs> okay, we don't know. We're going to go. We're going to take a look at it. What's what's uh Wolseley doing? He's simply uh, standing nearby watching. Okay, watching the proceedings. That's, mm -hmm. that's why I'm like kind of like oh, 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 oh. Is keeps my sitting down or anything like that? She's standing over oh, the table okay. with the staff. Gotcha. Not that it makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can I inspect it somehow? Sure. Is How there... does one do that in Shadow Run? Well, out of curiosity, what are the skills? Uh, there's there's exotic weapons. Um, there's perception. There's, no, um, I'd almost go knowledge skills on this one. Well, actually, yeah. Seth, I was curious if I could maybe say, use my, since it's a staff of some sort made of wood, yeah. could I maybe use my primal magic cunning from my Genesis character? You may. Uh, oh. <laughs> what's the difficulty? Uh, 
We'll call this uh, call this a hard, hard, hard check. A hard For players and listeners, when dealing back with the Genesis system, now you are basically rolling your skill versus the difficulty. Average is two difficulty die. Hard is three. Oh yeah, baby. Um, so this is gonna be a little odd, but. That is just, if I'm doing this correctly, that's just a straight up triumph. No success, but a triumph. Okay. Uh, you're not sure what this is or what it does. You can kind of guess some things by the name. But as you're looking over this, uh, the, this, the overwhelming sense of magic you're getting from it is, huh. This does not belong to this world. Okay, I'll go ahead and do with my energy link thing to both. I won't give it to Kizma. Okay. I'll give it to Sahim. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'll say to both. Uh, so to Sahim, give her the thing that doesn't belong here. To Kizma and Sahim, I'll say that um, it's a magical item. It appears to be somewhat related to its name, which was like cloud something. Cloud staff. Cloud staff. And just that, there's uh, lightning bolts all over it. Kind of run along with the idea that it's probably something to do with lightning, weather. I am Zeus, hear me roar. Right, yeah. Can I pick it up and uh, try to inspect? Okay. I don't Uh, know what you want me to roll for that, though. You carefully pick it up, and it's like touching one of those, um, you know, like at uh, science museums or something, they they have like those metal orbs that you can touch and it makes your hair go frizzy. Feels kind of like that. Does my hair go frizzy? A bit. Uh, Oh, my fur? Oh, right, I'm furry! (laughs) <laughs> no, you're not a cat. Yeah, not a lot. But okay. Like not, you're not full poof, uh, but there's a bit of poof okay. as you pick it up and begin to inspect it. Okay, what do you want me to roll? To, I, I don't have any knowledge uh, skills aside from languages. So yeah, just intellect, hard and intellect, intellect, I guess. For, or wait, what? Hard intellect? How, for, hard? If you're rolling for Genesis. No, I'm rolling in okay. Shadowrun. Uh, then I suppose... Yeah, just, uh, we'll call it just intuition. Intuition. I mean, if you want, there is enchanting and conjuring, but you can't do those untrained. Right. Yeah, I don't, so. I, I can't do, because I'm mundane, so. So mundane. Yeah, mundane. <laughs> Two hits. Okay. Is that, a, is that a glitch? That's not, not quite a glitch. Not, okay. Like it, it's too. Well, you need to exceed. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. One on your. Thankfully, hits. twos are not. Yeah. He does still have that for luck. you. Not for you. Okay. Um, so two hits. Two hits. Uh, yeah, this is definitely something magical and feels pretty powerful. It's it's. That sort of thing tends to be hard to gauge if you don't have the, the natural world around it that relates to it uh, um, around I, you. So do I also get the sense that it's not from here by my... Yeah, by that, by that much it's... Without, yeah. hit, wait, without getting his note about yeah. it. Okay. It's kind of getting the sense that this exists in isolation and you know that magic exists in this world, so... It exists in isolation. Meaning that the magic this wields is not Different. of yeah. this world. Yeah. Got it. It is not of the earth. So then, are you going to use it for anything? I look up to Kizma Sahin. I look to Kizma. <laughs> yes. Provided it can build things. <laughs> I just I just look at her and shake my head and go, okay, we're 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 gonna go now. Isn't some staffs can do that, right? I wouldn't know, I don't know magic. Okay. Just reaches out and starts wrapping it up again, binding it. And Nods to Wolseley. I guess we'll be going then. Thank you. I'll go ahead and get out of my chair and uh, follow the mountain. 
Okay. As you're heading over towards the lift, Wesley is just watching you leave. And fair warning, and I'm sure you all already guessed this. Um, given the... But bluntly, oddities of this interaction, I will likely have you followed. I would not be surprised. And I salute and head to the, like, pop into the elevator. We curators take our jobs very seriously. I just smile and uh, step into the lift. Okay. <laughs> I, want to, I realize something cool I should say, well, don't be surprised if we uh, disappear. Fall back. Disappear. Oh. Oh. Doom, 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 doom. Now they have to head back to the, the ground floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, zero. Anyway. <laughs> uh, you head back to zero, and uh, the lift door opens once more. You see the, the bank teller wave over as you. I wave back. Does he look like he's motioning us or just saying like no, goodbye? No, he's, he's just oh. acknowledging. I smile and wave and uh, so that I don't know how close I am, but I just mouth, I guess, uh, thank you, and then we'll go ahead and make our way out. He doesn't bother mouthing back, you're welcome, uh, very loudly across <laughs> uh, the room. I'll go ahead and get the door for Kizma and Sakin. Kiz- Kizma steps out. The staff is taller than she is. So it's <laughs> out of curiosity, you know. did... Well, I'll ask Kizma. Uh, Kizma, mm-hmm. do you want me to maybe carry it? Or would you rather carry it? I thought I was supposed to hang on to it. I thought that was the whole point of this thing. Okay, then. I yeah, will. just hold on to it. Let's... So, that's the cloud staff, then, right? I guess. It's leathery. So It's, it's wrapped. I, I figured that out. So we have this thing now, but it... Are we supposed to sell okay. it? It's apparently... No, no. We can't sell it. We should take then a look How at... do we get a boat? Well, how about we head back to the uh, apartment? Take a look at it, yeah. Yeah, we need to find a secluded place and watch for tails. Okay. Uh, so you guys head back to your van. And Run. Yep. Drive, drive all the way back to your apartment. Keep an eye out for tails. Okay. Uh, well, you're driving, so I will keep an eye out for oh, tails. Oh, right. Oh, Nobody else is good at perception I mean, either. I don't suck that badly. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and uh, roll your perception. Can I roll it, or am I just driving? I got uh, one it'll, hit. It'll take more hits from you since you're also focused on the road and driving. Oh, missed. Who has who's who's rolling what? How many did you dice did you roll? I rolled six dice and I got one hit. I also okay, I'm six. rolling nine. So are we doing like a teamwork thing and then giving the team things or if you want. It'll I'm be harder also for her. driving. Yeah. Because nobody else can drive. Don't take my one hit, uh, Kyle, and you okay. roll. Okay, I will help I will give you some oh, okay. some dice then. I mean I, I I can drive okay, it's just I have the glitch. And super good. Four. So four I get hits. Well, you're giving me them, though. Yeah, so I get four works. extra dice. Although, wait, no. The okay. dice have been rolled! But can I take them for, for me and not give we'll them to, to the somebody who, who makes glitches? <sighs> That's metagaming. We'll leave it to you, Seth. What, what do you think? Take the dice. Okay. Blah. should have thought that through better. Your dice rolled well, though. Uh, well, we don't glitch, and that's a grand total of six hits. Okay. Uh, Mintis, as you're keeping an eye on your surroundings, there's definitely a few points uh, at various intersections where you see the the car coming across on the, the roundabout or the T-section or wherever you are, and it's like, yeah, you've seen that car before. Ah. I'll All right, so I would like to take a roundabout, very circuitous, right? Is that the word? You just, you just Circumlocations? Kind of drive around and around and around and around and around about? No. <laughs> you said you were going to take a roundabout. Oh. No! What if it's a double mini roundabout? Then what are you going to do then? <laughs> just do figure eights all day. Yes. For infinity. 
So I, I would like to, uh, to infinity. like go go a ways out of her way, like stop it, and, and make us all get out at like another pub. Okay. I would like to remind you that we do have a. Yes, a boat I know. Yeah, we don't, we don't have too much time. While we're driving around, can I investigate the staff myself with my knowledge of uh, transplanted artifacts and the magical spirits contained within? You may. Would that be a Genesis, a Shadowrun, or an L5R check? If you have specifically a Shadowrun stat for that, go for that, but otherwise Genesis. I do not have a Shadowrun stat for that, so Should Genesis I be it is. Should anything for getting us places? Would this be a... Not if you're following the normal rules of the road. Yes, I Okay. Am. Would this be a knowledge check? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay. Could I give him, since he wasn't in the room where it happened, uh, could I tell him that it isn't from this world, and what I know about it, to give him a boost? Uh... I'll say since you rolled a triumph on yes. your uh, test and nothing else, then uh, you can upgrade Ooh. video piece. Uh, All right. Which for listener turns a green to a yellow. I have good. I have two ranks and two intellect, so I actually get an extra green die out of that one. I guess I should say an ability to a proficiency because some people might be using the actual Genesis dice instead of the Star Wars dice. They're pretty much the same color. No, uh, not really. Oh, never mind then. Um, what's the difficulty again? Hard. 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 Hard, hard, hard. hard Three check. purple. That's cocked. How do you... Curiosity says, well, uh, David's wrong on that. Cancel out. Is there a way, since, like, I know my mom is from the uh, Pathfinder world. Mm-hmm. And then there's Imagine in that world. Does it look anything like it could be from that world? Or since that's probably the only one that I know of or have good knowledge of. Or is there a way that I can maybe determine, like, obviously our characters don't like, oh, it's the Pathfinder world. It's the Shadow One world. We call it different things. But could I perhaps maybe narrow down where uh, it came you, from? I guess you'd call it Galarian. Galarian uh, yeah. It looks looks maybe like it could be from Galarian. Okay. You don't know. okay. Uh, that is three threat. Three success, one triumph. Okay. Uh, your your book learning is kicking into gear as uh, Zahine is driving very calmly about the streets of London, and it's getting to be about noonish at this point. Um, <laughs> you're uh, studying this staff and cross-referencing with everything you've read about the various different realms, and you feel as though... Perhaps, uh, perhaps Memphis did not recall this realm because it was forgotten. I see. Yes. Okay. Do I get any sense of what its abilities are? It appears to rather potently wield um, the... Not, not the entirety of the elements, but choice elements. Is water among them? Water is not. Water is not. Is air among them? Yeah, air is. Is it sufficiently... Uh, aeropotent? What? Oh, no. <laughs> to, say, perhaps... Provide overland transport to a group <laughs> of individuals. If one had sufficient harnessing power for it, perhaps... I take it I don't. <laughs> Guys, the staff is really cool. Um, forgot where it's from, but uh, it's That's got right. like I don't con- know what realm it is from. It's got like cool from. control over the elements, not water, unfortunately, but air. Um, but I can't make us fly. Out of game, forgotten realms. I, I know where forgotten realms right, is. I even wrote it on my notes. Making sure. I knew what you were on about. Um, That's what came to mind, but I didn't know that was a real thing. So, yeah, it's one of the. Oh, it's the. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. okay, okay. It's one of the classic settings from that company that lives on the coast with the wizards in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also that a, a certain author that I read a lot of wrote some books in. Mm-hmm. 
Why are we being... I don't know. I'm scared yeah. about this. We're making sure that the listener doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Mr. Ra Salvador Dali. <laughs> um, um, no. Anywho, oh. um... Or actually, you know what? We don't necessarily need to even go back to the apartment. I mean, we can just have the conversation in the car. Right. So, this still leaves us with a problem. We obviously can't give this up because it doesn't belong here, much less to anybody else. Right. And we still don't have a boat. Right. So and now it's daytime. We need to go take care of the boat. Yeah. And, and we... uh... But now we have even less res- even even more limited resources than what we had before. And we're also being tailed. Have we been able to lose the tail at all? No. Uh, let's, uh... As you, as you stop at a pub, somebody just pulls up on the other side of the street and just rolls down their window and is just watching you. Um, <laughs> guys? Do... Can do Minthus pod- and I recognize any of these individuals? Mm, you don't think so. Okay. Question. Hmm. Can this pub be within walking distance of the, um, the pier? Sure. And we go out the back door. <laughs> I'll be honest, if they're doing their job right, they'll have people out back. I know. It's, it's next to the pier, so the pub is called What's Up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> also, it might be interesting, maybe, if we were to say, I hate to say this, but maybe, like, split the party? And, like, keep one person here with the staff, or, you know, one or two people here with the staff, because that's more what they're interested in than other people can, like, you know... To uh, some boating experience. He's just, just nodding like, okay, yeah, this is my first time out of the lodge, but I, I feel like splitting the party. That sounds like a good idea. Well, I mean, we did it when we I first... I only know her. It's not. I'm not sure that we should do that. Okay. Well, it's just an idea, because... I, I feel like if we leave one person behind with the, the stick, and the other three people go off somewhere else, they're going to think to themselves, where are those three people going? And have them followed. Yeah. So regardless. I mean, well then, let's go steal a boat in the eye of the Bank of England. Honestly, not a bad plan. Because, I mean, are they going to tell the police that they saw us doing this? But they, like, then they're going to have to explain why they were following us. I mean, they'd probably have also, a valid reason to follow us, technically. Do rich people have to explain themselves? Oh. No, they don't typically now. Also, why do we necessarily need to, like, say, purchase a boat? Couldn't we just, like, rent a boat? We're going on our super clandestine, <laughs> like, secret, like, rebel <laughs> mission. Bad idea. We're going to rent Bad a boat. Idea, Memphis. I mean, just an idea. Actually, no, I like it. I like <laughs> where you're going with that. And Affordable just... day rental for a boat. <laughs> we only need it for, like, a couple hours. That's actually a fair <laughs> As long as we bring it back in in one piece. What's renting? What is that? You just pay the money for the short term yeah. thing, and it's yeah. less money. It's, yeah, it's typically a lot less money. Why didn't we just do that? Because we're new to this. It's it's this uh, this phenomenon uh, interdimensional uh, narcosis. It causes your brain to fall asleep a little bit, and you forget simple things like that. <laughs> that explains a lot. No. It's kind of nice. I was literally just making up in yep. and out of character. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, so we're sneaking out the back and renting a boat? Wait, if we're, if we're just renting a boat, we're not doing anything illegal, are we? No, that's pretty pretty, pretty normal. So let's just so, go down to the docks and rent a boat. Yeah, okay. Alright, let's go rent a boat. Although go pile before, back in the van and head to the docks. Before we go... Let's go take into account how much money we actually have so we know how much we're going to be able to spend for renting a boat. I've got a staff. Yes. We, we can't trade away. Yeah. Okay. I have, um, 4,000 million. I have 1,995. I have 1140. Is that enough to rent a boat, you think? We don't know. We're going to find no out. no idea. We're going to find out. We only need it for, what, a three-hour tour? Yes, what could go wrong with a three hour tour? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to fire up my uh, my smart device and look for boat rentals. Alright, uh, you're seeing there are numerous boat rentals. 
uh, some that appear to be sizable enough to carry roughly 10 individuals uh, mm -hmm. that will probably cost you anywhere between four and 600 new yen for the, the rental. <gasps> okay! <laughs> so much better than buying a boat! <laughs> We pick the nearest one and we rent the boat. All right. We also make sure we get some good insurance for it. Yeah. The difference, uh, sure, with the insurance, we'll call it uh, 750 New Yen. Okay. okay. So, so um, split four ways. I'm broke. Split three ways, 250 each. Okay. I got this staff, okay? I did something. I yes, kind of like you did something great. Yeah. <coughs> All right, so you pile back in the van, head down to the docks. Uh, there's, there's a you know an old salty sea dog captain. He's like, hey, you want to be renting my old Bessie, do you? Yeah. Why? Because we want to go sailing. What is drawn you to Bessie? What draws any man to the sea? <laughs> I like you. <laughs> I trust you with Bessie. <laughs> oh, or... no. Now that he's trusted us with Bessie, Bessie's going to die. <laughs> I will captain her as best I can. Hey. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll show you a few things first. I think that would be a good idea. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to watch over the shoulders so that way I also know in case something I goes will out. as well. All right. And, and I can't see anything through both of them because they're so tall. Uh, the the old salty uh, sea dog human is really scruffy, white hair, and like kind of wispy on top with the, the captain's hat. Uh, his name is Scarvy. Of course it is. Of course it is. Not to be confused with Scarvy. Never had the foul disease. Just wear a lot of scarves. <laughs> Really, they, they tie me outfit together. Anyway, he starts showing you the, the various I'm just like Troy Baker. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. He looks like an old Troy Baker. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Change approved. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, he, he starts showing you the, the various intricacies of piloting Bessie. And yeah. Uh, you you feel like you're getting the, the de a decent hang of it. Just go ahead and make a piloting check to see how well you keep piloting up. Piloting check and piloting is... Test. Easy. I mean, obviously. Test. <laughs> we're just going to pilot away while we're... Since we're all learning... <clears throat> all right, we reaction. There you go. Like teamwork thing and assist or... Sure. All right. So, David, you might be rolling an extra die here. Yeah, I better be. <clears throat> piloting is agility, if I remember Actually, correctly. Actually, it is technically Wait, we not a we need to do a, a piloting glitch. check now? What? Well, he's showing you how to pilot the okay. boat. Okay, so you guys give me your dice when you're ready. All right. See, I'm not too bad at the piloting. That's three. Oh. This be part. This be Starbuck. Good lad. Yes. Oh no! And you said you were good at piloting. Oh no! Well, I'll take I'll take these. Seems like the muscles more of an albatross. What happens when? Look at that. Okay. Well, fortunately, I rolled. Oh, well, that's a two. Okay, so we're good there. I did I, I did roll many ones, but Ooh. I got two hits overall. Oh wow! After all of those dice. Wow. Okay. Uh, as you're, you're all scrambling across the, the rigging and everything, and he's, he's pointing out where the, these be the life vests. If you need these, it be too late. And, uh, at one point... I like, like to imagine that I don't even need it, because it's, like, probably in the river I can just, like, stand up and do these. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, uh, probably but not. But channel's deep. Yeah. yeah. At one at one point, the rigging swings about, Sahin, as you're, you're standing up mm -hmm. and you don't see it coming, just whack, just clocks you in the face and you tumble over the side and fall into the water. Oh, I thought so. This is a moment of a moment of I'm walking, and then the next moment I realize I am soaking wet yep. and swimming. Yep. Okay. As you <laughs> gasping, push your way back up through the water, you're just hearing. <laughs> I will. I will reach over the edge and just I, like. No, no. I would like 
Or, or yeah, okay, fine. Uh, fine. Give you a hand or pick you up, whichever one you seem. And I would, I would use that. Yeah, Kizma is just rolling on the deck. I would use this moment to this helping hand mm-hmm. to uh, launch back into the boat. Oh, oh my! And land squarely on top of Kizma, oh. sopping wet. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to slap you off. Um, and then I give her a hug. Ow, oh, ew, ew, now my nice clothes are all wet, ew. I wander over to uh, to Memphis. Do you think she needs like a blow dryer for all that fur? Probably. So again, this is starboard, that's port. No, no, you got it backwards. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, 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 sorry. Port and then starboard. Okay. And then you were saying before Four we were an aft. Port and aft, okay. Ah, ah you got it from here. Bessie's in good hands. Glad to hear he just walks off the ship. <clears throat> oh, you got all that? <laughs> oh. We'll see how this goes. Um, I don't know. Well, we should probably reach out to Beth to go see where we should pick her up for after school activity. Yep. And I, I'm going to send her a text message. Okay. It says, we have a boat. Where shall we meet you? Also, uh, Hideyoshi. I'm going to get closer to Hideyoshi. If something's been bothering me all day, especially since I couldn't talk all that much up in that, uh, in that the pit. office, yeah, in the office thing. Why exactly did you like eat a napkin before we like ate breakfast? It wasn't a napkin, dude. Like someone slipped me a note and it said the wakened are waiting, and I, I ate it because that's what spies do is they they eat they. they I mean, yeah, that was that was pretty boss. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's in my digestive tract so no one can get it back, right? So you're like, Yamu, Yamu, Hideyoshi. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh... It says the waking and waiting. I mean, it's a bit vague. So they know that we're here. They might know that we're here, or they might just be on the island that they're waiting for people to show up, which I kind of would have expected, given that it's their island. True. And also, we don't know exactly if, like, say, the awaken. Or waken, waken, awaken. The 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 wakened is composed of awakened. Right. Anyway, we don't know if they're all like part of this, you know, secret evil society. Right. There might be like some cool people there or something. True. So maybe these might be the cool guys. I, oh, we the bad guys. guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna bring it up with Beth and I and ask her like, what gives. Okay. At this point, you get the message back from Beth and I, and she's actually well, calling. Speak of the Beth. Oh. Um. Hello. Presumably, we'd be meeting at the water if you got aboard, yeah? Uh. That's that wet stuff down there, right? I think he has got I, a lot I, of water. I fling some at you. Yeah, we're, we're already at the water. We have a boat. Are you trying to be clever? I'm not very good at it, I'm sorry. Well, at least you know. <laughs> I'm just in the background like, oh, snap! <laughs> and a lot of us will be there shortly next. for our after-school activities. All right, we're at such and such dock location yep. boat place. Yep. Docking Bay. Docking Bay right. 94. And yeah, you're, you're looking about and from your prism text from before you're still seeing. There are a couple of individuals just kind of walking back and forth on the docks and yeah, clearly glancing your way more than once. I want to go ahead, since I've done this before, just go ahead and like those take little snapshot headshots of each one. Okay. See if they change throughout the days and weeks or however long we're here. Oh, we should like, do it. Like, give them names. Like that uh, guy's slick, because he's got his hair slicked oh, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. And then we could call, uh... Maybe, like, Beard. No, no. And I point to, like, a really ugly one. I kind of get close. We'll call that one the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get an upper chest to your chest because I can, cannot Sponge. reach. Uh, yeah. I like the team dynamic we're building the here. So physical effect, physically affection is what we call it. Right. Yeah. All right, you got it, boss. Uh, <laughs> there, there are a couple of uh, vehicles that are kind of pull up. There's like a, an old school uh, microbus and. Uh, like some, some kind of old clunker that, that pull up at the docks and you recognize Beth and I and she clamors out and they're, you know, like all sorts of, uh, you know, wannabe street tough young kids with the, the leather jackets and the, the switchblade comb kind of deal. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So now we're back in Greece. <laughs> in ancient Greece, right. one might Ooh. say. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she, she kind of motions to them to move out and walks over to your boat. Uh, this is impressive. I'm rather bold flaunting it out in the daylight like this. Who'd you steal it from? Uh, we just rented it. You what? I'm bored. This is Bessie. Bessie, me, Beth, and I. And I just turn around and get on board and move myself to the pilot's seat. She slowly steps on board Bessie <laughs> and just walks back over to you, Hideyoshi. Seems my hearing is going early. What? You do understand that if this vessel is spotted out at Lioness and is reported to the owner and he knows precisely who rented the boat from him it probably won't do him any good it'll do whoever is trying to track us down if they get that much information a whole lot of good I imagine yeah you do imagine so then you have some plan to clean it or something so that it cannot be traced Kiesman knows how to clean a boat I what? You can make this thing untrackable, right? And erase our presence. You said clean the boat. There, I mean, well, there aren't I mean, that many barnacles. Not, not that necessarily. Like, also, to clarify, is the name of the boat actually on the side at all? Or yes. Okay. Proudly. Proudly. It's old Bessie. Ah. Anyway, I'm sorry. So should I just scrape that off? Or no, no, we'll we'll come up with the plan. And I'm gonna look around for like something to cover that with I mean it, so there's, there's like an old ratty blanket you can sort of drape over the, the prow that'll question, hopefully cover that unless is, a stiff breeze comes along is there a is, is that boat for a real 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 cheap price still at the docks sure you thinking a, a boat swap I mean I don't see how that necessarily solves all of our problems. Yeah, but it could work part of the way if we swap a whole bunch of times. Got about half an hour. It's like a boat sort of uh, a boat VPN, if you will. <laughs> Do we gotta switch them all back when we come back, or just the the, the first one we swap to make sure that, that he gets his boat back? What sort of rebels are you? Was it? I believe we're actually uh, pirates. The cause comes first. Yes, it does. Let's do this. And I point out where the boat is. That it's uh, people wouldn't care if went missing. Yep. I guess I will uh, set sail for the boat that we were going to steal and buy and ignore. All right. <laughs> you, you pull up to it and yeah, it's a. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably a nicer ship than this one, but it's, yeah, probably you're, you're giving the distinct impression that whoever is selling it doesn't care if it just goes away. All right, so... Everybody off. Well, we're at the dock, so while we're idling out, like, away from it... The, the engine just went... Clunk, 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 I'm going to point out that while one of us could go and grab the boat, we go out a ways, so we don't get uh, overrun by police or authorities or whatever and then we swap boats and come back later you know they've got their own water vehicles yeah it'll take them a lot longer to get to us I'm feeling like just concealing the names and identifying information on this boat and then just going for it is probably our best bet on which boat? that one old Bessie we're on right thought. now Bessie so what did we come over to this boat for? I was just trying to avoid a confrontation. <laughs> well, that didn't work out for you, did it? Nope. I'll stop doing that. Well, that's oddly disarming. <laughs> <laughs> right, then. Get your person working on cleaning this, I suppose. All right, and I guess... That's me, yes? <clears throat> yep. Yes. So I'll find out if this thing has any computer stuff, and I'll... 
clean it. Yes. Yes. Make it so that no one knows what boat this is. And then also doing our best are to Are we not like, returning old Bessie? We are. That's why we need to make sure that no one knows that it is old Bessie. She's got to be in disguise. Okay. We're going to make it into new Bessie. <laughs> okay. So we're going to make it better for Scargy? Well, yes, we'll return it better than we found it. Okay, because, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to you know, ruin Scarby's livelihood or anything. Yeah. I mean, That's the guy sounds like, you know, okay. he's had multiple roles that he played in his life. I don't want to get on the bad side of him, so. <laughs> a man of many faces, what right. I would say. He just put a few dots on his face and he's a new man. Right, true. <laughs> Troy Baker. Anyway. <laughs> so we're going to go around and... I definitely don't want to be the last of us. Con- <laughs> conceal, conceal the name in all places and, like, maybe find some extra rope to, like, strap whatever's covering it down a little bit um, so that it, it's not right. liable to blow in the wind okay. when we make our high-speed getaway. Uh, is, there, is there a use rope? In, <laughs> in there's, there's outdoors. Sure. Make it outdoors, Jack. Okay. Um, there's also engineering. No, this is, this Who wants outdoors. to help me with outdoors, please? There's nautical mechanic under engineering. This isn't really nautical mechanic. Okay. Anyway, uh, what are we doing? Uh, outdoors what, check. What what skill? What um? It's link intelligence. Attribute? Or... Logic. In intuition? no intuition. Sorry, intuition. I mean, I can give you a hand. I'm not the best at intuition. I can at least roll my intuition and give you a, a die. That'd be great if you guys could give me some more dice than the, the four that I have. Nice. Kizma, meanwhile, is going to try to... Thank you. Or actually, can I assist Kizma? Clean the, clean the stuff. You're going to help clean? Do Wait help a clean second. What? He's bad with tech, so yes. he's helped Kizma. What? I do have a logic of six compared to an intuition of four. You, you can you can be the... Like, like she's got the hood up and she's handling all the tools and you're holding the flashlight. Right. Okay, okay. So okay. Well, will you help out her? So, that's, uh, what are we doing? Engineering or... Yeah. That's, oh, wait, no, I guess that's a roll um, that a person can roll. Did he, did he, I guess this wouldn't be engineering, this would be more... Electronics? Yeah. yeah so I cannot roll that, but I can go ahead and at least roll my six plus, because I'm yeah. guessing logic, so yeah, yeah. contributed to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That's right. It'll be super easy. Barely any convenience. Um, Scrubby boats is tight. Because that's four that I can give her. All right, so she's rolling 15 dice. I hope she's better than me. I got two hits. She got five. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, you managed to hopefully cinch it down like with, a, with an old bungee cord. Mm-hmm. And is yeah, that'll mm-hmm. hold, you think? All right. That'll do, Lord. That'll do. Uh, so you've, you've got that situated. Yeah, that was a racist slur uh, you just said there, sir. I, I don't know. I you begin to like pilot out to see as, uh, at this point, uh, Beth and I is starting to look a little bit impatient. We're going to be back in time for tea. You seem really concerned about tea. It's really good tea. I, I'm... Actually, yeah, you know what? Judge intentions. Okay. Okay, I'm going to join you on that. I'm going to use a different set of the dice. other those wonderful, wonderful however many people that are in the dire bots. Dire bots. Dire bots. Ooh, um, that was much better. Three hits. Okay. You just need to know uh, get their names and all, all right. that. And then... All of them are pretty angsty, and as you, as you approach, just like really off put by Slenderman vibes. And... <laughs> Two hits. Okay. Uh. So are you are you doing an assisted check or are you doing? I was doing my own check. Okay, uh, yeah, you're you're not quite able to to get a read on like I should seem to be talking about tea. Mm-hmm. Hey, Yoshi, you're starting to grasp. This isn't just about tea. Yeah, and at some point after I assuage her concerns of our tea date, mm-hmm. I am going to go to my two friends and say. I think that her interest in this tea time is perhaps not just about the tea. Don't know what, but keep well, your eyes open. Her and her, you know, parental figures, or is think, it like some I think bigger, the grandparents? Well, grandparents. But yes, is it just them that are all having tea, or is it like you know, Illuminati like thing? Illuminati. <laughs> um, it might be the latter. But the who knows? What? No, like the 
It might be that it's some oh, sort of oh, like secret okay. thing. Okay. Maybe they're like descendants of King Arthur, they're guarding the island or something. Whoa. And T is their word for like the knights or something. I don't Whoa. know, man. So can we be like the T of the round table then? Sure. All right. Oh yeah, that's right. Because T and table Question. start with the same letter in this alphabet. I right. also want to be looking to see if any boats are following us. Anybody's following us. Okay, uh, there are a number of boats that appear to be heading out. Some for just uh, some kind of joy rides. Some appear to be heading specific what places. Do you want to uh, roll? Uh, just roll perception. I want to assist that. Well, you're piloting. Oh, never mind then. Yeah. I mean, I can assist, I guess. So yeah, go for. Piloting the boat. Okay. Uh, and you're gonna need an extra hit because things did not go well the first time. Or can I? What's what would be better for me to help you out, David, or to help out Rachel? What's the perception? What would um, you prefer? It doesn't matter who we see if we die. Okay, I'll help you out. Then. Yeah, that's probably better. Uh, can I also uh, get the assistance of the dire rats? Uh. They don't appear too interested in, in helping out with that sort of thing. They've, they've got, like, some kind of plan spread out on the, the deck. And like, <laughs> they're pointing back and forth and whispering. Four hits. Okay. Uh, and all sixes, by the way. Yeah. Uh, they're... It doesn't matter, but... Anyway. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's well a feel good, man. Uh, yeah, they're, they're a handful of small, much smaller crafts that appear to just kind of be... Zipping back and forth mm-hmm. and not getting too close. Does it seem to be the um, the bank people? <laughs> still? Uh, it's hard to tell how smartly they're dressed under the wetsuits. Okay. Or dry suits. I got another two hits on that test. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you are starting to, to pilot this thing out to, into the open waters, and. Uh, Huh, that was weird. Keep it keep it below the RPMs and into the normal range. And yeah, you're you're not you're you're pretty sure probably Scarvy told you how to coax better speed out of well Bessie. Yeah. She'll treat you well if you treat her well in return. But it's it's not coming to you. It's, yeah. Right. So you're you're rather slowly just. Any chance I can make a memory test to specifically recall something that I seem to remember hearing? Sure. All Go right. ahead. Could I, since I was helping them already, pilot do also a memory test and then give. Sure. Them you're, you're both kind of staring ah. off <laughs> weirdly into space. I rolled four dice and got four hits. Ah. That's all right. I rolled ten. <laughs> You have ten memory? Yep. I have a logic of six. And I forget what the other thing that goes into memory. Uh, I think it's intuition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Must be nine. Oh, I have ten. ten. Shut up, guys. My character's the muscle, not the brains. Oh, well, that shot's already been yeah. taken, so. She was the muscle. But no, she's the sneaky sneaks. Now, are we I know, doing that's our, why I was being facetious. Are we doing our own uh, thing, or am I assisting? I, I probably good. didn't say out loud that I was trying okay. to remember this. Then I'll go ahead and just do this myself then. <clears throat> so I got four hits. Okay, so both of you are thinking back, and the, the, kind of the air <laughs> shimmers before you as... <laughs> uh, you're remembering as... A uh, heart music going on yeah, in the background. Scarby was leading over the engine, and he's like... So what you gotta do is, well, somebody is yanking back on our throttle, and when when old Bessie is least expecting it, her reach into the engine right here, and <laughs> he's going through this intricate process of like you gotta throw back, and then before she realizes what's the point, you gotta throttle all the way forward. <laughs> All right, I, I begin describing the process to to Memphis, who's probably like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I remember it exactly." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have to sneak up on her. <clears throat> all right, yeah. What he said. Yeah, so right, it's, it's creepier because it's Slender Man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. Don't let her know we're playing in this. All right. All right. Start the countdown. Three. I'll two, go. I'll go sneak up on her. Yeah. Go. Am I perceptive <laughs> enough that I hear this happening? Yes. <laughs> I go back. Our voices the are not quiet. No. Right. And you're you're looking through like the out, out, out of the, the the hutch with the the you know the, the driver's station and everything, and you just see Beth and I standing there, just looking between you. Frantically, I, being like, oh, I gotta sneak up on the boat. Just like. <laughs> so the movement is doomed then, alright. And now, what's the weather like? Uh, the weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If right. not for the courage of the fearless crew. Okay. 
the messy wouldn't be lost. <laughs> okay. uh, oh no! No, uh, it's, it's it's slightly choppy seas. You know, right. it's, it's the typical dreary, overcast Londonium day. Oh, cool! So it's like I just disappear into fog and then I come back and then all that. Oh, no. <laughs> That'd be yeah. super creepy. Yeah. Save yeah. that for when we actually get to the island. Right. Sure. Sure. Um, actually, I can do a con. Maybe even do that. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Like, that'd probably be stealth, though. Well, do a con to sell like I'm this oh, weird evil entity. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so you managed to coax a bit more speed out yeah. of the whole nasty. And uh, as you're uh, pushing out further into the more open waters, um, you're seeing off in the distance and growing larger on the horizon at this point, uh, getting into you know, early ish afternoon, is this almost, you know, idyllic. Shaft of sunlight spilling down to bathe in its in its uh, you know rolling hills and magical terrain, just uh, this you know in, inviting uh, paradise almost it seems from a distance of the island of Linus. However, as you're drawing closer, you're seeing uh, pipes laid across the surface. You know, willy nilly, uh, larger structures appear to be poking up. From behind, uh, sizable barbed barricades that encompass the entirety of the island. So as we're as we're starting to get a little bit closer, I'm going to uh, ask Veth and I. So, I see you and your little gang have a plan. Oh, we're very good at swimming. Just couldn't swim all the way. So we're supposed to park the boat and then swim to the island. You afraid of water? No. Well then. I just didn't know that that was the plan. You're welcome to stay on the boat. Thinking to myself, okay, how good am I at swimming and how good am I at swimming while covered in guns? I don't know. We did bring extras and she pulls out uh, small kind of rebreather devices. Oh, that's really handy. I appreciate that. I'm going to we don't need those, thank you. So no, but seriously, what is the plan? And I ask her to like show me the details on the map that the kids have been looking over. All right then. And I bring the other three members of our party in, so yeah. we all know what's going on. She draws you in, and you see there's this. It looks like um, this is something that's you know it like. I guess a small girl received for her birthday, you know, great, uh, Atlas is a fantasy worlds kind of a thing. And this, this looked like this was kind of ripped right out of that sort of thing. And it's, uh, just laid across the deck like it's an actual map. But, you know, there's, you know, cartoon unicorns frolicking about and everything. <laughs> and I, I, when I see this map, I'm going to lean over to Beth and I and say, never. Make fun of us again. I know, it's the closest we've got, and from all intents and purposes, it seems the terrain actually matches rather well. Not entirely sure how that happens. More magic, obviously. It's a magical place. Right then. So, see, so just south of that unicorn, you've drawn a big arrow, what's that mean? And proceed to ask questions right. about the plan. Uh, yeah, she, she's starting to, to indicate about the island and uh, kind of motioning off in the distance and marking. Uh, where they've drawn, it appears to the various structures that are at least visible from the exterior and where the wall uh, encompasses the perimeter of the island. And she's motioning to some ruins at the center. Here's where we believe they've built their main infrastructure. And it appears to be centered around some sort of uh, druidic arrangement of stones. Hmm. Like stone's head? Something reminiscent, obviously, but it's not Stonehenge. Oh, okay. Not the Stonehenge. Well, yes, because it's not on the island. It's, you know, back on the other island. But it appears to be some sort of, uh, well, from all the old stories, some sort of uh, magnet for magical activity. Strangely enough, though, a few individuals who visited the island before the Awakened got their hooks in it seem to indicate that there was already some sort of machinery there before the Awakened arrived. Interesting. Do... Does any of this sound familiar to the books that Thanaticus gave me that I also shared with the group? I did some of them in it get read. But, um... 
like things about this island. They're like, oh hey, other things to read. Fine. I mean, <laughs> how much does Kyle know about the island of Linus? Kyle knows David Lee's quiet. How much does David know about the island of Linus? David knows that it is. It's basically Avalon, right? Neat. Okay, that's more or less all that David knows. Okay. Uh, read bits and of. Now Rachel knows a little bit more. I've read bits of Lawhead, <laughs> and I think at least one of his stories mentioned it as a thing. And I, yeah, that's that's all I got. So. Here we go from the intro of the Wikipedia article. <laughs> Linus is a country in Arthurian legend, particularly in the story of Tristan and Isolde. Said to border Cornwall, it is most notable as the home of the hero Tristan, whose father was king. In later traditions, Linus is said to have sunk beneath the waves sometime after the Tristan stories take place, making it similar to East and other lost lands in medieval Celtic tales, and perhaps connecting it with the Isles of Sicily. There's evidence that they were on a single larger island, which much of their land lost to rising sea levels and or poor bulge sink. So it's basically, you know, your, uh, you know, your Atlantis, whatever lost sort of cities. So sort of. Atlantis of basically Great Britain. Yeah, and okay. it's uh, steeped in Arthurian legend. Uh, in medieval Arthurian legend, there are no references to the sinking of Linus because the name originally referred to a still existing place. Linus is an English um, alteration of French Leone, Leonais, or you know. <clears throat> anyway, but uh, yeah, where's the important stuff? Uh, Basically, the legend like, of the Sunken uh, Kingdom appears in both Cornish and Breton mythology. In Christian times, it came to be viewed as a sort of Cornish Sodom and Gomorrah, an example of divine wrath provoked by unvirtuous living. Uh, the, Huh, I thought I thought it did have connection to Avalon. Well, I mean, you are the GM. You are God. Does it have connection no, to Avalon? It does not. Uh, it, it, was, it wasn't going to play into anything significantly. So, apparently not. Um, I, my one piece of knowledge was wrong. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, no, but, and my one piece of gauge knowledge is no longer valid. Yes. Uh, but, uh, suffice to say that uh, at least... In this uh, version of Arthurian legend, it actually uh, has some connection to, um, you know, the, the lost magical land kind of a thing. Okay, so it's like like we were saying, kind of like the Great Britain's Atlantis. Sort of, sure. In a way. Right. Um, Steeped in magic. Is it, okay. But is it known to have also uh, technology? Like building, structure, it was not. machinery? Okay. So that's an unusual... But that's the legend from this reality. You happen to have a hunch, at least, that it, uh, this Linus being a legend in multiple different realms, it mm-hmm. might pop up in one and shift into another as it kind of has similar properties was, as yeah. the lodge itself. Out of, okay. out of curiosity, would my body know, or did I read about, like, when was the last time it was here? Like, say, was it, like, uh, give or take 800 or some odd years around the same time that the staff showed up? The last time Lioness was here, it's beyond any sort of okay. reliable written history. Okay, just wanted to make sure it wasn't, like, this weird, like, oh, tiny, whiny. Uh, <laughs> Wibbly wobbly stuff? Right, yeah. Spipsy, boppy, boo. Okay. Mm, <laughs> my. All right. Well, uh, this, if we're gonna actually, before I even say anything, are any of the uh, uh, teenagers uh, armed at all? I mean, obviously they have arms, but you know, like they all just kind of open their jackets <laughs> okay. proudly to show their puny little sidearms and okay. knives okay. and whatnot. So, it's like, yeah, we got, it. we got. It. Okay, okay. Um, knowing that I did not equip my guns to be underwater. You don't have to. Oh, we don't as long as to. you drain the water out before you shoot them, they're fine. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's that. That does like if you if you are in water and there's water in your barrel when you try to shoot the gun, it's bad. All right. But basically, at this point, you've moved in firearms beyond like powder muskets. Okay. So you don't yeah. have to. Yeah, everything's them. contained. All right. If we ha- if you have caseless ammunition, don't get that wet. Because right. that, that the way the caseless ammunition works is basically take the powder and glue it into a block. Oh. It's kind of cool, actually. Okay. Well, I don't know how gel ammo would work in that situation. That's probably self-contained. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I think I we're all probably I think fine. We're good. I think mm-hmm. what I have is 
Um, Just wanted to ask before we actually do anything like that. Yeah. If I do make sure, if I have to, I'll use an edge point. But go ahead and take off my contacts and take all my electronic devices and put them in a bag. Okay. And then, yeah. so that way. Not At this bad. point, Kizma's just grumbling, and so we have to arrive there cold and wet, and maybe you get slaughtered, okay. I mean, if you want to be a downer about it. I take her, I actually take her aside, and I was like, well, we may not actually die, apparently. <laughs> what? Oh, oh. Mm. I don't know how it works because Sonoticus would not tell me. Okay. But apparently, there's like this reconstitution process. That doesn't sound pleasant. No, he didn't seem to say, like, seem to like talk about any pleasantness. But um, at least we wouldn't be dead. Of actually talking to Beth and the other teenagers so that way they don't actually hear this weird thing going on, like, oh yeah, if we die, we'll be yeah. re bored <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> Turns out I do not hear the conversation at all. Perks of being Hindu. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, there, there's a, there's even a bit of wariness, it seems, among the, the directs, but uh, as everybody is starting to gather their things and get ready for the, the swim, as you've found some sort of place to. Leave the boat? Um. Should one of us stay with the boat or are we all gonna go? I think we might as well all go. Yeah. Um, does the. Does the boat come equipped with a sea anchor? Uh, of a kind. Like, a, like an old school, uh, kind of old rusty anchor at the end of a chain? I guess that's. that's... Yeah, I guess it's not as good as an actual sea anchor, but the I will let all the anchors that we have out as far down as they will go. Okay. Is there like a fishing rod in the boat at all or anything like that? Sure. Right, I'm going to go ahead and put a fishing rod up so it looks like someone's just fishing. And make sure I tie it, you know, kind of secure Scarby, it. Scarby around. seems like the kind of guy who would go out fishing. Yeah, but make sure I secure it so that way if the fish does, you know, take a bite out of it, it's not going to mm-hmm. fly away. But, you know, that sort of thing where it's like, okay, it looks like someone's there. Yeah. So, doing their business. Not, not abandoned, you know, uncharted for territory. Anyway. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, but as everybody is gathering their things, uh, Beth and I is po- uh, directing you to a, a point on the map. This will be on entry point. It appears to be where their uh, defenses are most blind and hopefully weakest. We're able to make our way up through this cove here. Okay. I'll follow your lead. Well, that was the assumption, yes. Figured it would be good to say, too. Appreciate it. Well, then, all goes to plan. We actually find a way to knock out the Wiccan's foothold up there in Lioness. Maybe you can become honorary directs. That would be pretty right. nice. Thank you for the offer. But let's first get through the mission. Agreed. You've yet to prove yourselves properly. Well, well let's get on with this. Tally ho, and then I go jump in the water. <laughs> and I'm probably still wet. Yep. I'm going to make sure that we all have our rebreather type breathing apparatus thing. Yep. And then I'm going to jump in the water. Everybody's diving in and beginning to swim, and immediately you're getting uh, across the, the link from uh, Kizma. Of course, I'm gonna just sink. <laughs> she's just flailing as she's dropping, 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 <laughs> fighting her way to j- even just stay level. Uh, I would uh, try and help her out if I could. All right. <coughs> so you all begin your uh, aquatic submarine approach oh, man. <laughs> into the the Isle of Lions, yeah. controlled seemingly by. Uh, your nemesis in whatever this interdimensional war is. Uh, we'll pick that up next time. Uh, what did I say? Ten karma? Ten karma? For, yeah. For each session? Uh, we're, so. yep. we're Ten karma, five thing. XP for... Yep, five XP for Genesis. I'm going to spend that ten karma to increase my logic to three. 
and we'll get super mystical and magical and uh, Stonehenge next time on Tim Portalers. Thanks for checking out our show. If you want to learn more about us, follow us at Tim Portlers on Twitter, or you can email us directly at tim.portlers at gmail.com.